So welcome to my video on finishing projects, credibility and sales. My name is Neil Potter and I'm with Improving Your Small Business. So the reason I put this video together is because it is a chronic situation where small businesses do not finish correctly customer projects and they get a bad reputation and a lack of sales because of that, but they don't realize the reason behind their lack of reputation and bad sales. So I want to put into a kind of a nutshell here, now why we finish, what we finish, how to finish, and keeping your customers happy, really happy, and making sure you get the sales you need uh, to run the business. So the problem is in a nutshell, customer projects are not finished, the customer becomes mad, and there are lots of negative uh, consequences because of that. The reputation and sales of the vendor small business then slide. And what's amazing to me really is that the vendor doesn't really see why sales and reputation are sliding. They're so busy on the next contract, they don't really stop to figure out truly what was finished, what was not finished, and why that even matters. Okay, how to kind of even benefit uh, from that. So we'll take a holistic view of finishing contracts why and kind of how to maybe clean up a current mess uh, that you may be in. So stick to the end for that. So let's start with some statistics and the current situation. In a recent neighborhood online discussion in my neighborhood, somebody posted a question uh, whether it was common for contractors to leave jobs unfinished. And within an hour, about 100 people said, yes, it was common. Uh, they had a negative experience with their contractors. This to me is shocking. How could it be that a hundred people complained about vendors or small businesses not finishing work? Why would it be that common? Kind of what is going on? If you look at some of the uh, industry uh, statistics on customer satisfaction, 13% uh, of the customers will tell 15 people or more about a negative experience. This is a very large number. You do not want to be in a situation as a small business to have your uh, uh, customers tell 15 people not to use you. Okay, that's not, not good for your situation. I, this is a, actually a small number. I think actually that would be a bigger number in reality, but uh, still, even if you had one person say to 15 people or 10 people uh, not to use you, that would be, a, I think, a big problem and a lot, a lot of lack of sales uh, to you. 68% uh, of customers uh, are willing to pay more for great service. So if you do finish, finish correctly and check, uh, work is finished, then you can leverage that. You can actually benefit by maybe um, showing how you're different from other vendors in your particular industry and charge a little bit more, but actually explain kind of why you are so much better. 93% uh, of customers are uh, will make a repeat purchase. So if you do finish your customer's work correctly and check that, then 93% will actually buy more stuff. And if you don't, they won't. Okay. And I think you really want to be in a business where you get uh, repeat business. Customers that are customers have been made customers. You don't have to kind of spend money to get them again. And therefore you want to do all you can do to make sure they're going to buy more stuff or refer you to other people over the years. And then if a customer's uh, uh, service is excellent, 78% uh, will buy more stuff even after a mistake. So if you get, look at the last topic area in the, in the video, you'll see ways to kind of repair current situations where you can get customers kind of back. Let's take a look at some reasons why vendors or small businesses move to the next project and don't finish the existing one. And so I think the first one is that uh, the next project is a shiny new object for new money. Whereas the money on the existing one has been paid or to you uh, or to the vendor. And you know, why bother doing the last 10% when we already have the money in the bank? It's kind of boring. Let's go to the new one. So the next shiny object is kind of too appealing without a recognition really of the benefit of finishing up on the current one and the negative consequence if you don't finish correctly. Uh, that kind of goes by the wayside and people are just going to uh, going to inkling to get to the next project and make the new money. At face value, the existing one uh, will not generate more money. Actually, it will. Okay? If you're clever, it actually will. And so just assuming that the existing contract, uh, there's no more money in it, 
uh, and therefore you should just kind of do 80% or 90% and then move on, I think is a huge mistake. Uh, if you see the next couple of topic areas, you'll realize uh, why that's a huge mistake. The vendor, the small business, uh, simply cannot remember uh, what uh, has to be done. And therefore they don't finish because they kind of lose track of what finished actually means. Uh, they typically don't know what the list is. They have no way to record it or don't record it. And therefore they just think in their head, ah, probably done and they're going to move on. And I'm thinking, sitting here thinking, no, I have a list of things which you promised um, and I need to track them to closure. And by that point, they've kind of vanished again. Uh, uh, the vendor doesn't uh, think there's any negative consequence. This is also a big one, I think. They see, you no, know, we're 80% done, it's going to move on. They don't recognize the previous data back here about the negative that. If you have one customer that is unhappy with you because you kind of moved on too quickly and didn't really finish, they could be one of the 13% and tell 15 people, 10 to 15 people, of that negative experience. I do that all the time. When my vendors don't finish up correctly, and I'm like kind of upset with them, I either tell people not to use them, or I tell people to use somebody else, okay? And so I'm a good example of the 13% that will kind of spread the positive word if I'm really happy, and the negative word if I'm really not. You cannot afford that in your business. You need everything you can get uh, for the references and now repeat business. So let's discuss why finish. I think it should be fairly obvious. Let's hope it's obvious, obvious now. Why to finish? A reputation. If you're a small business, you don't have a gazillion dollars for marketing and a gazillion dollars for you no know, lawyers and whatever. Uh, you need to have a good reputation. You need to have an excellent reputation. And you get that by finishing stuff up correctly and then moving on after the work has been done. Um, if you do this really well, you then start to realize or You'll remember, I think you realized before, uh, there's more in the current client. Okay? If you're in good standing with them, like you really finished the work correctly, you can then point out new things. You can point out the fence is kind of creaky or kind of tilted, or that the concrete is cracked, or the lawn is kind of thinning, or the head should be kind of trimmed, or head should be trimmed every month, or that the painting should be going to repair or whatever it is, the plumbing is going to bend. If you're in good standing with them and you're conservative, you're not going to go overboard, then yes, you can make a, make a, a point as kind of things to go fix. And if they like you, they're going to buy more stuff. Now, I had one vendor, actually a plumber. I thought they did a good job on the whole but they charged a little bit too much, kind of a bit too premium. And then they kind of pointed out things in my house that were going to really kind of silly, like a slight crack in the you know, porcelain that was really not going to be an issue, but they were going to, they could fix it for a thousand bucks, you know, or they could, you know, make a, a bit of pipe kind of look prettier. And so, you know, you can go overboard and make it kind of silly, but if you can point out some solid things and not going to be overly expensive, then yes, you can start to kind of make more money out of the current situation. Um, you want your customers to be your free sales team. You want them to be working in parallel to you, you know, behind the scenes, telling other people they're gonna use you. If you did a great job with them, they're gonna talk you off to everybody else about how wonderful you are. And that's your free sales team. So if you're a small business like me, you're not gonna to want to have a employed sales team or lots of salespeople. Uh, you wanna have customers gonna do that in part uh, uh, for you. And so you can only do that if you finish things and get in their good standing, and they'll do it for you forever. Um, you then wanna be able to ask for testimonials and new leads. Again, if you don't finish up the work and you're in kind of not good standing with them, you really can't be in a position to ask for uh, testimonials and uh, new leads. But if you do, you kind of can. So these consequences, these positive ones, are really not kind of seen by most small companies. They are too enamored and too busy thinking of the next thing versus kind of leveraging uh, the existing kind of stuff. Now, the other part of this is defining dumb. I think all vendors or companies should have a single page checklist that says what done is. So consistently you know what done is and you can check it off as you go. Now in my uh, list here, the black items are the generic things you always put there. 
come up with your own black items in the black text items. Uh, request defined and approved by customer, pretty obvious. Uh, dates established, materials ordered, uh, work ordered, you no know, scheduled, uh, unique items for the, this are, and you can list unique items. So the black items, the black text items are the, basically the default ones. And then you have a place to kind of put in the unique things. And you want to make sure you have a good list of unique things you've elicited from the customer that they've kind of mentioned and go through that list with them and make sure you have a good list uh, to work from. And then you have some a few more things. Work is done. It's actually checked by your staff. Just by doing this one here uh, correctly every time will get you into a finishing position uh, most times. Then check by the customer. You know, they have the list, you have the list. Have them check it off uh, too. And their outstanding, outstanding issues are then resolved. So if, if there are things that are not done correctly, uh, then kind of resolve them correctly. I, I had my um, backyard done a while back and I was the tracker of their stuff, of course. Uh, but actually when I tracked it and I said, these are the things I want you to go fix. I took pictures of them. I sent them the pictures. Within a couple of days, the guy was back there fixing it. I thought it was going really good. And they fixed it correctly. Uh, very good. Uh, downside, I had to track it for them. Upside, they were responsive. So they're going to earn a couple of points with me uh, for that. And then if you do all these things really well, you can then get a survey, you can get a testimonial, and you can basically get uh, suggestions to them for other things they could actually go work on with you and spend more money with. So I think having a simple single page checklist, paper, digital, phone, you can name your choice, uh, will get you into a position where you know for sure exactly where you stand on all these particular customers. Now, if you look at my tracking video on tracking tools, uh, that are also very simple. You can then digitize this and kind of make it automatic uh, for your company. Now, you might be thinking by this point in the video, hey, Neil, we have a big mess. We have lots of customers we don't even know whether we finished. We don't even know what the contract was in the end. We forgot about the whole thing. We might be finished. We might not be finished. They might be happy. They might not. We really don't know. What I would do if you have a series of kind of messes around here, I would work with your staff to begin with. Just kind of a powwow for a couple of hours and make a list. Which customers do you think you didn't finish and they were like, they didn't treat you very nicely at the end because they were mad. You believed you may have got rushed out of there by some other thing, uh, the shiny objects. Make a list of the customers and what you believe might not be finished uh, for them. And then go contact them. I just say, we did some work for you a few months ago. We don't know for sure if we finished or not to your satisfaction. And just going to be open about it. We want to make sure we actually did finish. If we did not, we apologize. We want to make that good and then work with them to make a list. Okay, And then you can look at your list or the list they give you and figure out you know, what was finished or not finished. So A, you're trying to build your reputation back up again and you put yourself into good standing to then leverage that. Okay, But you can't do that unless you uh, work with them. If you actually do work with them and repair kind of old baggage, old issues, they can then recommend you to other people. Okay, you can repair that uh, free salesperson issue I mentioned before. Now, if you do recognize there are some contracts uh, where there are some unfinished work, then ask them if they would like to you to finish, okay? uh, but then provide uh, the work for free. Because if they've paid for it already and you just kind of didn't wrap up, didn't finish up, didn't clean up, then you're building a reputation back with them and repairing that and then getting back into a good standing with them. If they have not paid you, so there was part of the work which you didn't do and they never paid you, you just never got to that point of the contract and then you're going to move on, then what I would consider is giving them a large discount, at least on the labor to do it. Again, you're trying to repair the reputation with them and get them back into good standing. And a way to do that is say, well, okay, we made a mistake. We left you high and dry. We're sorry about that. We want to make good on it. And we want to charge, we will have to charge you for the materials. However, the labor is very much discounted, you know, 10%, 15%, 20%, whatever it is. And so you basically repair your reputation uh, by doing that. Then you have a happy customer. They become your free salesperson. They might buy, may buy more stuff. At least they may tell other people the positive 
or not tell people the negative, which is kind of what you want. And then if you do this correctly, then you can see what kind of goodwill you can get out of that. Testimonial, reference, more work, whatever. Uh, but you're basically getting back to kind of where you want to be at the beginning. So I would say uh, it is worth your time to bite the bullet, apologize, be humble, work with them on their issues, okay? and get into a particular position where you can kind of leverage that. They were customers of you at the beginning, and therefore it's less sales time and marketing to kind of get new customers when you can go back and uh, recover old ones. Now, I'm a small business, there's more. If you go to my website, you'll find articles that are put up there uh, that kind of cover many topic areas. Uh, the one I mentioned before is tracking, okay? Uh, some ways to kind of track things to closure uh, using some cheap or free uh, software tools that kind of run on different platforms like phones and uh, laptops and whatever. And there are other articles out there too. And if you are interested in help, whatever kind of help, kind of chit chat, help, services, whatever, uh, go to my services section and you better see kind of what I do and how I work with you. Any comments or questions, you either put them in the chat below the video and I'll be happy to respond or go to my contact page and send me an email or uh, use my contact form. I get back with everybody on everything. Thank you. Bye-bye.